This presentation is on sustainable development goal number five, promoting gender equality and empowering women and girls. Specifically, we will focus on ensuring women's full and effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision making in political, economic, and public life. In many countries, women have a unique connection to the environment. Therefore, women understand the importance of biodiversity and conservation more, than, more so than their male peers. Women are also impacted more by climate change and extreme weather events. By increasing female participation in political, economic, and public life, advocates for the environment will be increased. Worldwide, women remember, remain in underrepresented in education, politics, and the economy. The gender gap in education is improving. However, girls in Sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East, and Asia still face difficulties achieving primary, secondary, and tertiary education as compared to their male counterparts. Okay. Impoverished nations show a higher gender gap when it comes to education. Women, when women do not achieve education, they are put at a disadvantage. They are more likely to be impoverished, to have limited access to jobs, and to not participate in the political system. This lack of education is one factor that contributes to the unequal participation of women in the workforce. Women are 30% less likely to participate in the workforce than their male counterparts. In countries where employment is equal, women suffer from a pay gap of 77% in limited leadership positions. Women of color are even more affected than their white counterparts. With limited participation in leadership positions, women have a smaller influence on economic issues. Out of 196 countries, 19 of them have leaders, have women leaders, and 22% of parliamentarians are women. Women's participation in politics is the slowest growing gender gap measure. Women participation has only increased 11% in the past 20 years. Women's roles as far back as hunter-gatherer societies revolved around plants and land management. Women forage for wild foods, collect firewood and water, and cultivate farm and livestock. One study found that women in the Sierra Leone community could name 31 uses of trees on their land, where their male counterparts could only name eight. Another study found, through a survey of men and women in the Amazon, that women have a better understanding of conservation and why it is important. Their input was included during the formation of a natural reserve, and it proved to be quite valuable. The women's familiarity with the land, water, and animals gave them a unique respect for the environment, making them powerful advocates. When women have access to forest and agricultural land, their families benefit greatly. During times of drought and famine, the women in the community use their knowledge to cultivate the appropriate plants, forage for food, and find scarce water. Though women interact closely with the land, in many developing nations they do not have access to land rights. The agricultural land is passed through men, so women do not get any property if their husband, father, or brother dies. This loss of land and livelihood can force a woman into poverty. The open access forests they forage in can be lost to land deals with corporations. If forests get cut down, it means these women must search further for fuel and foraged foods. This takes time and energy, restricting women from other activities. Climate change has a greater impact on women than on men. In developing countries, women are often responsible for food, water, and fuel acquisition. This allows them to see firsthand the environmental changes that are occurring due to climate change. It also makes their lives more difficult. Drought and natural disasters, disasters cause water sources and land usability to become unpredictable. This can cause women to travel to seek out these resources or migrate. Migration can be dangerous for women because of their increased risk of, such, of sexual violence. Natural disasters are also part of climate change. Women are more likely to die and die at an earlier age due to natural disasters than men. Women are often required to wear restrictive clothing and not taught to swim and climb trees, making them less able to escape disaster. Societal expectations can restrict a woman's ability to survive a disaster as well. In some countries, women are restricted to their homes, making them unlikely to receive advanced warning of disaster and less likely to leave their home in the event of a disaster. Women are also expected to care for children and the elderly, hindering their escape even further. 
women are disproportionately affected by climate change. This pus puts them in a unique position to advocate against practices that cause it. However, they do not get included in adaptation and mitigation planning. One example of women recognizing the importance of their environment and organizing to stop it is the Chipko movement. In the early 1970s, foreign logging companies came into the Himalayas. They deforested huge swaths of land and provided no compensation, erosion control, or water purification to the communities that depended heavily on these forests. In one of the largest protests, the men were summoned for compensation so the logging could proceed, but the women of the village still blocked the loggers by hugging the trees. After this protest, a 10-year ban was placed on logging in the Himalayas. This movement blossomed into the Save Himalayas movement, which has, brought, which has fought against many environmental injustices in the region, as well as led a large reforestation project. If gender equality is improved, women will receive better education, health care, and compensation for their work. They'll, they will also be able to participate in political discussions and planning. More women will be in higher levels of the workforce, so their interests will be heard in the economic center sector. Another special population affected is children. Children with better educated and healthier mothers turn out to be better educated and healthier themselves. Improving education access for women and girls is the biggest step we can take towards improving gender equality. The measure is looking better, but there is still work to be done, especially in developing countries. Better education leads to better health, higher place in the workforce and income, and more political agency. This will allow women to take part in addressing issues that affect them, like environmental degradation. Workshops and interviews are also used to collect knowledge from women and to empower them to use their knowledge to inform policy. Providing grants to women-led organizations is another way to foster gender equality. Also, supporting women activists, like during the JIPCO movement, gives examples for other women to follow. In conclusion, women lag behind their male counterparts in educational attainment, economic measures, health, and political activity. Women also work closely with the environment and are uniquely affected by climate change. By closing the gender gap, the environment gains advocates. The first resource here summarizes the worldwide gender gap, focusing specifically on education, political power, economics, and health. The second resource focuses specifically on women's relationship to the environment, and the third focuses on women and how they are impacted by climate change. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below.